Welcome back to another episode of Joel Explores Tech. I'm going to be taking a look at this Emerson 5.5 inch color TV and uh, FM AM radio. Uh, I found it in a recent uh, Goodwill run in the uh, bulk bins, so it's probably two or three bucks to pick it up. I'm always a sucker for a uh, CRT, so let's uh, take a quick look at uh, what its features are. There is a uh, carrying handle, which can double as a uh, foot to elevate the front. It's a color screen. It is missing, I believe there was a, a plexiglass cover here that had the um, information for tuning. It has a volume control and a, a tuner knob. In the top, we've got a, a AM FM radio switch, uh, a switch for the TV band between uh, UHF and VHF, and then the power TV and radio toggle. On this side, we've got headphone, and then the various controls for the picture tube. Power input for AC adapter, as well as a DC barrel jack. And then on the back, there is a battery compartment. Uh, quite a lot of batteries. I believe it is 10 uh, batteries that it would take to uh, power this up. I can't imagine anyone actually uh, running through batteries uh, to uh, watch this for, for not very long, but uh, the option is there. We've got a uh, external antenna plug here. The, the uh, built-in antenna is broken off, but uh, it's not gonna be much use these days anyway. Um, but I'm hoping that I can utilize uh, this antenna input at least to uh, play some old uh, NES games or uh, other consoles. We do have a uh, focus control here for the tube. And that pretty much wraps up the uh, outside. So let me uh, go ahead and uh, see if we can power it up and give it a test run. So first I tried using the uh, AC wire that came with the unit. I checked the continuity and uh, it is a good good wire, but I uh, was getting no life out of the unit. So then I tried a uh, DC 12 volt input and we are getting life there. So if we go to radio, There we go. So we're getting uh, radio. Let's go ahead and switch over to TV and see what we get. So we're getting the static, obviously. Nothing on the screen yet. And we have a, it looks like the uh, image has collapsed down into a dot. I don't know if you can see it on the uh, screen here, but I'm gonna go ahead and shut that off. If you ever see the uh, picture collapsed either to a horizontal line or a, a dot, you're going to uh, not want to leave that on very long because it can burn into the screen. So let's go ahead and open it up and take a look inside. So first up, I wanted to give the standard CRT warning. Uh, if you are not familiar with the internals of a CRT, uh, they can store uh, very high voltages and you want to be uh, very careful about working on the inside if, if you're not familiar with uh, how to be safe. With the unit open, uh, it's actually fairly obvious now to me what the uh, the issue is here. The deflection coil is actually missing on this TV. Uh, it must have been either uh, somebody else had, had previously tried working on it uh, or tried swapping out the, the tube potentially. But without that deflection coil, that explains why uh, the the uh, electrons that are being fired by the, the gun at the back of the the tube here are just hitting the, the center of the, the picture and not actually being diverted into the, uh, the scan lines on the, on the set. So the tube itself is a uh, Matsushita 160DB22. Generally it would be very difficult to match a uh, deflection coil to the tube. Uh, luckily I have a, a local friend who does a, a lot of uh, CRT repair and he happened to have this exact tube with a deflection coil. So he uh, gave me that, and uh, it looks like it should be a uh, fairly easy swap. The only difference I'm seeing currently is that uh, the ground wire um, going to the ground strap on the, on the uh, tube itself is actually soldered in to the neck board. And the one that he gave me has a uh, connector that would slide onto an existing pin on the board. So I'll have to make a modification on the uh, existing wire there, but otherwise I believe we should be okay to go ahead and swap this in. So let's go ahead and get started. So here are the two tubes side by side. Uh, this is the still the original one installed, 
and the one that I got from a friend. Uh, you can see that it has the deflection coil and all of the uh, needed components uh, for tuning. It has the connector, which uh, looks like it should uh, connect right here on the board uh, without an issue. And uh, I believe I should be able to just pop off the neck board, uh, remove the four screws holding in the existing tube, and drop in the new tube, and uh, get everything wired up and uh, give it a test. So initially I had thought there was going to be an issue from this, this uh, grounding strap. Um, it is actually soldered onto the neck board, but it does look like um, the grounding straps are actually removable. This is the one that uh, I actually had come with the, uh, the new tube, uh, but I was able to take that off. And I believe once I unscrew the uh, existing one, I should be able to take this grounding strap off and just drop it on here. So uh, I won't need to desolder or change that uh, grounding connection. So let me go ahead and get this removed and uh, we'll see if this one fits. So I've started the disassembly and hit a small snag that I thought I would uh, document here. Um, so I've got the, the screw from the bottom corner removed. They didn't have one installed in the other bottom corner, uh, which is fairly uh, difficult to reach. Um, but this, this uh, top screw here was bumping into the component on the tuning board here. Um, so I had to loosen those screws so that I could move this board. Um, and in doing that, this little uh, piece with a pulley on it has uh, dropped out, um, which I wasn't able to see how that was mounted in there. So I'm gonna have to get that figured out, uh, but something to watch out for if you're ever uh, doing one of these models. Um, but I believe I should be able to get that back in there. Um, and now that this board is to the side a little bit, I can get this screw out and the other one. Um, so let's go ahead and continue. So I've now got uh, both tubes out of the TV. Uh, you can see that they both have the same model number, 160DB22. Um, they do have this second number that is different, uh, 94 on the old unit and 72 on the new one. Um, doesn't seem like a date code, so I'm not sure what that number would indicate, but I think we're ready to see if I can get that mounted back in there. I'm gonna have to figure out uh, that uh, tuner wiring, like I mentioned, the um, cord for the, uh, the tuner knob but I'll see if I can get that uh, lined back up and then uh, we'll get this other tube put in there and see what we've got. I'm gonna go handheld to show this uh, portion here, but uh, I was able to get that uh, pulley back in place. You can see right here, the uh, pulley assembly with the, uh, the dialing cord uh, for the tuner is back in place. Um, that was actually held in place by this screw right in the center here, and there's two more screws in the front of that board. Um, I did end up having to disconnect all of these uh, connectors to manipulate the board enough to be able to uh, get that back in place, uh, but that is working now and uh, I'm able to uh, tune again. Uh, so let's go ahead and get it set up and uh, see if we get a picture with the uh, new tube in place. So now is our uh, testing moment of truth. I've got the NES hooked up via the RF cable. This uh, TV doesn't have the standard uh, coax jack, so I'm kind of doing a, uh, a hack here where I've got the, uh, the coax connector and the other end of a uh, headphone jack. Um, I have ordered an adapter that it, uh, goes from um, an external antenna uh, Fano connector uh, to the uh, female uh, coax connector, which would allow just screwing this directly on. Uh, but for now we can test. The uh, end point is the antenna signal, and the, uh, the first portion is the ground. Um, so I'm able to test uh, like this for now and uh, see if we get a signal. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Alright, looking good so far. We've got our static on the screen. Let's go ahead and there we go. A little bit staticky, but let's go ahead and uh, load up a game. So obviously this is not going to be a uh, great signal. So with the handheld connection method, the audio was fairly staticky, uh, which is to be expected. 
I'm not 100% sure yet if it's the connection or uh, something with the set itself, um, but I'll be able to look into that more when I have a, a better connection method in place. Uh, I think the video looks fairly decent uh, considering the interference we're seeing. It's a pretty strong image and the colors look pretty good. Future Joel here chiming in with uh, an update on the antenna adapter. Um, I'd order a two pack, uh, so I've got one plugged into the back um, and it goes from the Fano uh, headphone style jack with the, the uh, two conductors to the uh, coax antenna connector. Sadly, another issue has cropped up. So we can see the image is collapsed. Oh, and now of course it's working. Um, there you go. There's a, um, an issue where the image is collapsing down. Um, but if I put any kind of even slight pressure on the side of the set, uh, the image comes back, uh, which leads me to believe it is a, um, loose solder connection joint uh, on the board. Uh, I believe that the case is just slightly flexing um, and causing that because I can also do it with uh, rubber gloves or, or you know, not, just to confirm that it's nothing uh, conducting with my hands itself. It's just the pressure on the side that's doing it. And you can, you know, tap on various places on the case and it'll pop in and out. So again, uh, probably a future video, that's something I'll have to look into a little more in depth, um, as well as the, the uh, reception didn't improve much with the uh, better connector. Um, so I believe we're gonna have to look into the, uh, the actual tuning circuitry, uh, maybe do some uh, recapping and back to the original video. So we uh, have proved that the, the screen is working and uh, we were able to get a, a signal from the NES. I think we'll call this part one. And in part two, I plan on uh, adding a composite mod uh, to this set, which will allow the uh, composite output from the NES and uh, probably a much more reliable signal. I'm not expecting great video quality, obviously, out of this set, but uh, it's mostly just a kind of a experimentation and uh, learning a bit about uh, working on CRTs. So uh, I hope you enjoyed watching, and I'll see you next time.